What did you think of Rod 25? Um, I thought that it was, uh, when it was over, I was, I, I, I thought that it, it was a, I don't want to say a disappointment, but it was for, for a show that probably had a lot of viewers and had been hyped so much. I think that they did nothing with their time that's of really of any value going forward um i think that the austin undertaker i mean austin uh and vince mcmahon and shane mcmahon segment that opened the show was was i mean it was nice and it was fun it was predictable um but you know it's not it's just like it was a moment you know it was it was a good open from there i didn't really like anything much on the show and I felt that, like, you've got a Royal Rumble in a couple days. And very clearly, I mean, this is, if, if ever there was an example of, of how things have changed in the business, this show is. Because in any other era, when you're a couple days away from the Royal Rumble and you had a show like this, the emphasis would be not on the show, but it would be on the Royal Rumble and what to do to promote the Royal Rumble. And... Aside from the last segment with, with Lesnar and Kane and Strowman, that was a real disappointment. It was a nothing segment. Yeah, it was It was there. It was like, okay, we have to do a segment. They're all here. And it was like, a, yeah, it was nothing. It was, it was something, but it was nothing. Nothing got me interested in the show. Nobody promoted the Royal Rumble whatsoever. No, there was no angles to promote WrestleMania. I mean, obviously, the key thing that I was expecting was you had Undertaker there. And, you know, you would do something to at least tease Undertaker and John Cena. And they did not do anything of the sort. Um, and, I mean, you could make the argument, well, it's it's months away and you got to get past Royal Rumble. But it's like this is like the biggest audience that you're going to have perhaps all year on Raw. And you should do something with that time. And instead, you know, you you had all these people that you advertised to be there. And for the most part, with a few exceptions, and very few, I don't know that any of them really added to the show at all. I mean, you had your DX reunion segment and everything like that. I think the two-location thing, obviously from people at both locations, the two-location thing was a disaster. Um, I mean, I've been to shows, Starcade, where you had the two-location thing, and people are going like, oh, what a it's terrible and all that because of what happened there. And it's, it's really not, I mean, I went, but the thing is, is you go back and forth and you get good matches in both places. And this one, you didn't have that at all. It was like you had long breaks between, um, I mean, I mean, I, I had complaints from people, you know, a lot from who were in both places, obviously at the Manhattan center, you had more complaints because aside from the DX thing, I think the feeling was is that they saw nothing and the people, you know, it was very, very high ticket prices, um, especially if you try to get secondary market in, in Manhattan Center. It was That was really high. Um, and you, you essentially saw no good wrestling, hardly at all. And, um, yeah, yeah, you know, you, you were sitting there and... But, you know, I mean, no good interview segments, really, other than that opening segment. And it was just kind of like, let's trot everybody out. And my other thing was, when watching the show, that, um, you know, the overriding thought when the show was going on is just, some people got really old. And, I mean, it happens. But it was really, it really hit me. Um, you know, Vince, especially Vince McMahon and, and Gene Okerlund, you know, but they, they got old. And... Some didn't, you know, I mean, but it's just like they were out. I don't know. I, I, I thought the show was a huge disappointment when all was said and done, especially looking back on it. As it was going on, it was kind of like, okay, okay, you know, and then now that it's over, it's like, what was accomplished here at all? Other than, you know, Austin and Vince was, you know, they were, they had their old chemistry, good nostalgia and all that, but. The rest of the show, I mean, no good matches, no good nothing, no teases. I mean, for the go-home show for Royal Rumble on Raw, I mean, what you had Asuka throw out a bunch of women, you know, which you know, made her the focal point of the Rumble, I guess. 
and no, oh, I mean, I don't know. Nothing, nothing else. Well, it opened up with Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler at the Manhattan Center, made up to look exactly like it did on the debut Raw. Yeah, they Siren, had, I, they Ico had, Pro had, banner, whole nine Ico yards. Pro, the Ico Pro banner I thought was a really funny touch. Yeah. Then we got Michael Cole, Corey Graves, Booker T opening up the show from the Barclays Center. They went to the they went to the hassle of moving the announce table to ringside because I guess that's nostalgic nowadays. But why? I mean, it, it, don't I get was me wrong. so astounded that they bothered because Michael Cole goes for one week only, I mean, and I actually like, rewound it because I thought, "What's for one week only? Like, what are you talking about?" And then I found out he was talking about the table. <laughs> like, we were supposed to care that the table got moved. Well, here's the thing: the moving of the table away from ringside was this idea that they had to make a change. That served absolutely no purpose whatsoever. None. It just makes it it makes it awkward because so many times when you've got um, you know you have the, a wrestler at the desk and then they they're there to set up a run in they got to walk down this aisle rather than being right there and also I don't think the broadcast is exciting when you're not right there so I have no idea why you know they made that move other than they did but if you're going to move it back, why is it like for one week? I mean, you might as well just go. I have no yeah. idea. And the yeah. way he said for one week only, it was like he was telling us, listen, if you're worried about this right now, don't worry, because it's only for one week only. We'll be back over there where we were before in case you're gravely concerned about where the announce table is. Yeah, there's one there's one news story that I want to actually bring up right now because it's it's not a surprise, but it's very, very interesting. And that is that they sent mailers out. Um, or oh, they, emails out that to, to people who you know have canceled the wwe network which is you know let's you know um it's 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 completely nuts because this is the one time of the year where where a lot of those people are going to come back at full price and they're giving them three months of the wwe network for a dollar 99 so i mean the key to this to doing this that the only thing i can figure out you know, is that, you know, they, like I could see like offering like a month free or something like that. Well, they always do. But but they offered this is is that they, um, I, 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 the only thing I could think of is that the number is bad and they're so adamant that, you know, that number gets spruced up that they're, they're doing everything they can to just get a number up rather than revenue up, which at this stage of the network... Um, you know, if you're, if you're, I don't know. I mean, yeah, you're going to get a, you're, you'll get people who will take that offer up for a dollar ninety nine. But since these are people who've already shown that they will cancel, they're going to cancel after WrestleMania, and and you get a dollar ninety nine. Whereas maybe they wouldn't order the Rumble, but a whole lot of them are going to come back and order, you know, one month to get WrestleMania. So it's at least a, it's a nine ninety nine. And the ones that don't, it's not five times as many. In, in the sense of five times as um, five times as many will will take up the two dollar offer instead of the ten dollar offer, um, so you're going to make more revenue. And especially it's over three months because now you're factoring in the people who would order three months themselves, so it's thirty bucks. So from a financial situation, it's it's just nuts. It's like, you know, I mean, I I get the reason why because they're going to announce a number the day after WrestleMania, but it's like. It's it's just, um, you know, I mean, it, it's not like these are people who've never gotten it before who are going to go, oh, look what I'm missing. Um, I'm going to just keep this thing. These are people who have had the network and have decided for whatever reason they don't want the network. And again, during this time of the year, they may come back because that's the pattern. Every year, you know, it starts in January and it goes up and up and up, you know, by a couple hundred thousand. And peaks, you know, generally it would peak the week of WrestleMania. Now, it, in a sense, because of the free month, sometimes you may peak a little bit after WrestleMania. You know, maybe as long as a month after WrestleMania, and then it goes down. But the point is, is you know the pattern. And, you know, again, they were very little up. Um, the last time they did a thing over year, from a year over year number, you know, they were up very little. So I, the only thing I can think of is that they... You know, I mean, they're, they're going to announce in February a number on December 31st, which is before this offer is up. So we'll kind of know at that point. We'll know in just a couple of weeks, um, you know, really where they stand and what this actually means at that point. 
But Listen, all I know is after 13 years of running a subscription service, the idea that they could not be up right now from January through WrestleMania is absolutely completely inconceivable. Oh, I'm sure they are, they are to a degree, but why would you do that? I have like, no idea. They do this every year. Like this, like you said, there's one time a year where people are going to actually pay money for this service. And this is it. Rumble through WrestleMania. Yep. And this is the this is the time they give it away for free. It's it's mind blowing to me. Yeah, yeah. Or ninety nine cents for three months. I mean, you may as well give it away well, for free. Dollar ninety nine, I think. Isn't it? Or is it ninety nine cents or is it not dollar ninety nine? I don't know what it is. I, I didn't get it. Okay, I think it's a dollar ninety nine for three months. But anyway, yeah, that's uh, that's that. So anyway, back to the show here. Shane and Stephanie are in the ring. I guess they're cool with each other after. They try to ruin each other's lives at Survivor Series. Water under the bridge here for the 25th anniversary. Shane thanked everybody, production people, wrestlers, employees, etc. Thanked the fans. They had a Raw's Greatest Moments video package, which, pretty damn good video package, trying to put 25 wor- uh, years worth of stuff in four minutes. Yeah, they had some cool, they had, they had a lot of really cool clips there. It was, um, that was a fun, that was actually a pretty fun segment. Steph says it would not be possible without one person And that is Vince McMahon. Crowd goes crazy. They give him a standing ovation. They bow to him. They sing his song. They chant, thank you, Vince. He acts like he's going to just say goodbye and leave. And Steph stops him and said, we, Shane and I did a GoFundMe to create a commemorative plaque to give to you for 25 years of Raw. Isn't that like hilarious in in, in their own way? So Vince turns heel. Well, you know, he says it looks a little cheap. Feels a little cheap, but then again, we're here in Brooklyn. Turns the fans immediately. He's appalled by this plaque. He says, plaque is what these fans have in their teeth. It's what they have in their hearts after eating all those Nathan's hot dogs. He's appalled. Everyone's chanting asshole. He says the only person he has to thank is himself. And then they hit Austin's music. Place goes absolutely nuts. So he comes out, and Vince says, listen. He knows the stunner's coming, so he says, listen. Lots changed. You look great, but Mother Nature has not been kind to me. I'm a member of AARP now. I got heart problems, arthritis. My bones are brittle. Stock's plummeting tomorrow after this promo. I live in a retirement (laughs) community. Now I'm a senior citizen. But Shane, he's in his prime. So, of course, Austin shakes Shane's hand, raises it high, and lays him out with a stunner. They play his music. So Vince grabs some beers. He says, I don't blame you. He had it coming. Fans are chanting one more time, and Vince says, I don't think Shane can take one more of those. He offers a toast with Austin. They hug. They parade around the ring. Vince gives him another hug. And then Vince goes to leave, and for some reason he just stops. And he turns around, and he starts to beg off. I don't know why he didn't just keep walking. So Austin offers him another drink, flips him off, gives him a stunner. I do have to say, at 72? Is he 72 now? 73? He's 72. 72? At 72 years old and brittle and old and AARP, that may have been the best bump he ever took for a stunner because they have never looked good. So the people go crazy. Austin gives him a, gives Shane a second stunner. And this was the best thing on the show, a recreation of the best thing they ever did and their greatest feud. And then Austin drank beers. They threw beers at him. He couldn't catch them. I guess he they got most, he, he caught most of them. I think they got a new pitcher. I'm not going to blame Austin. Oh yeah, well yeah, Mark Eaton's been gone for years. Yeah, so they should have brought him back to throw the beers. Yeah, no kidding, no kidding. So anyway, that was uh, that was a I love that opening segment. I'm not going to lie, I thought it was great. It was cool nostalgia. I mean, it was what it, what it should have been, and it made uh, use of Austin because I don't know what else they could have done with Austin. Because there's you know, nothing else they should have done with Austin. I mean, the, the worst thing could have been is that he was sitting at that freaking card table. Oh. Yeah, we'll get to that. We had Absolution, Alicia Fox versus Sasha, Mickey, Bailey, and Asuka. Literally, Mickey and Bailey may as well not even have been there. Asuka beat up Sonya forever. They cut off Sasha forever. They go to break. They come back. No hot tag. The girls just start brawling outside, and Fox misses a kick into the corner. Sasha hits the bank statement, gets the submission. And so... Baby faces are celebrating afterwards. They're crawling so, up on the posts. And- I want to make some... They did... They did- they were front-loading commercials here because they did, they did two commercial breaks in a 12-minute match, which they never do. That's well, probably because the Austin segment went a long time, right? 20, 25 minutes with no commercials. Yeah, well. 
So the Bay Face celebrate afterwards, and then Asuka turns on all of them, kicks her asses, throws them over the top one at a time, and dances. I don't know if that was supposed to be a heel turn, but everybody loved her when she did it. No, 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 no. It wasn't supposed to be a heel turn. It was supposed to show that she's the favorite for the Royal Rumble, and she's the one to beat. I think we all I mean, knew though, that. Yeah, I think that... Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the situation is. I mean, everyone... I know within the company, in, 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 even in the match, everyone kind of wants to know what's going on because nobody knows, but everybody senses that Ronda Rousey's in it because it makes the most sense for her to be in it and win it. But no one knows, you know, no one knows for sure that's the case. So aside from that, I mean, if it's not her, who, who I wonder who they, you know, who would win. I mean, because it almost had to be Asuka, but after doing this, I almost think that, like, you almost telegraph it too much that, that, you know, the ease that she was able to throw everybody out, which means that you don't want to make it too predictable. So she's going to be the key to the match, but I don't think she's going to, I don't know. I don't know that she would win, but who else is there to win? I mean, if she wins, if Asuka wins and it comes down to Asuka against um, Alexa Bliss at WrestleMania, I mean, it's there. We already saw the match. It wasn't that hot when we saw it. So I, I just think... Yeah, and a hell of a follow-up, I might add. Well, I guess the idea Asuka was, beat the champion. Can we have some mention of why she's not getting a championship match? I guess there's a... I'm, I'm sure that the storyline... I, okay, I don't want to say I'm sure because this is WWE. I presume the storyline is they just... I, I presume the storyline is that, that it will make sense down the line, but we have to... But I think that they want... How many times Asuka. you've told me that and it hasn't? Yeah, about 80% of the time it doesn't. And this may be... This, the odds are... but. Logically, whatever they're going to do at the Rumble probably plays a part, and they need it because if Asuka won the title, she wouldn't be in the Rumble. So I think the key is 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 that they wanted to keep Asuka undefeated. They wanted to show that she was better than the champion, that she's the number one woman on the brand, which is probably related to Rousey in some form, and that um, they. But but there's a reason she had to be in the Rumble, and Bliss not in the Rumble. So. I think that the Rumble itself... Well, I mean, the only thing that makes sense is Rousey and Asuka are last. Rousey throws out Asuka. Asuka wins a title. Rousey faces Asuka. Yeah, that seems to make the most sense. That makes that seems to make the most sense of how you would do it. Um, but, I mean, it would have been nice since, you know, Asuka beat her three weeks ago that they would have announced, you know, on February 15th or whatever, Asuka's getting her title match. Yeah, Something... You really can't do that because if you do that, it renders the win of the Rumble useless. No, it doesn't, because that person goes on to Mania. Yeah, but if you're if she's already getting her title match, you already say she's getting a title match, and then she wins. It's like, what did she win? She's already got her title match. So you really can't do it that way. So that's why I can see what they're doing. I thought, you know, that she would win the title before the Rumble. She'd be out of the Rumble, and that, um, you know, Rousey would win the Rumble, and then you have that match where Rousey chases her for the title. But evidently, you know... And again, I don't know that Rousey's in it. No one does. No one knows. Everyone feels it, hints it, and all that. Um, I don't know what Rousey's schedule is like. There's, there's, you know, um, but there's obviously a reason that that, that um, Asuka has to be in the Rumble. Okay, well, let me ask you a stupid question then. Yes. If Asuka's going to beat Alexa Bliss, and they want to pretend it didn't happen until after the Rumble, and not acknowledge it until after the Rumble... Why didn't they just save that match until after the Rumble? Um, I don't have a good answer to that. I think they just wanted to get it. I think they wanted to establish that to get Asuka over with, with that non-title win. They wanted to establish that as quick as they could because they wanted her to be as over as she could be, which she isn't, by the way, but that's a different issue. Um, but, she, you know... I mean, they gave her the arm bar. I mean, you see, I mean, it's all falling into place in theory. I mean, if they, are they going to follow up on it? I don't know. Angled man with a ref. He says, tonight is about celebration, not chaos. I have signed Lesnar, Strowman, and Kane all to be in the ring together, but I don't want it breaking down. So what the hell do you sign this segment for then? I know because it's like, it's like the last time that they were all together. Um, it was Strowman's chaos. Right to- Strowman tried to kill two of them. Yes. So you got to figure that if they're all going to be there, that both those guys are going to want to kill Strowman. And, you know, to say that and mentioning that, considering... No follow-up. The the fo- yeah, considering this is the follow-up of the attempted murder. Yeah. No, was, the follow-up it, of, of of Stephanie re-signing him. There was zero explanation, and she was on this show. That's true. No explanation whatsoever. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And, and no talk of it. Nope. No, not even no, mentioned. You know, I'll tell you what, that that's a real hole because that made no sense at all. So Coach walks in, then Whippleman, Brawler, Brooklyn Brawler, Teddy Long. Teddy Long, by the way, looking younger than he did refereeing those NWA shows in 1987. No, he didn't. Oh, come on. Te- Have you Teddy seen him on those shows? Oh, my God. Teddy, Teddy, Teddy aged the last time, since the last time I saw him. Brother Love's in there. Boogeyman comes in to eat worms. That's the segment. Yeah. I mean, again, the, it was the problem is that there were far too many people that they brought in, um, and they had to get them all on screen, and, you know, I, I don't know. They, you know, they overbooked. They overbooked. They overbooked the guests, and they underbooked the wrestling. We're back at the Manhattan Center. Lawler's waiting for puppies. Ross introduces us to an Undertaker video package. You, by the way, did you see the, the pictures of Ross and Lawler asleep? No. Oh yeah, there's uh, there's pictures on the internet. Um, you know, because between segments there was like nothing happening at the Manhattan Center for a long period of time, and there's a picture of of Lawler and he's Lawler's asleep and Ross is like. I don't think he's asleep, but he's like, he he, he he's looks, struggling to stay awake. Yeah, yeah, I think that that's kind of the best description of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. but Lawler's just out, and it's just like, what a you know, what a deal. Undertaker comes out, probably his shortest entrance in decades. Fans chant, "Holy shit!" Cuts a promo. He says, what, "Cartage." What do, you, what do you say? In his promo. I mean, he's. I mean, that. When that I'll promo tell you right over, now. But when that promo was over, I'm just sitting there going like, what the hell was this? I'll tell you. First off, I guess they're trying to pretend that he debuted on Raw, which he didn't. He says, this carnage began 25 years ago. I've been digging holes for 25 years. Anyone who dared step foot was buried. Buried everyone from Mick Foley to The Undertaker or to Kane. My own blood, my own uh, flesh uh, and blood. Uh, Austin. You know what's another interesting thing? Is... is I mean, there was clips of him, but really no mentions at all of Dwayne Johnson. There were very little. Yeah. Says, everybody tried, everybody failed, and now on this sacred ground, I declare for all of those who have fallen, it is truly time you rest in peace. And the fans chanted one more match. Ross wanted to know if it was a warning. Lawler didn't know how to read it. Now that I read my own notes back, <laughs> I don't know what he was talking about. When I first heard it, I thought he was retiring. Like, no, I, I, I beat I, everybody. No one could beat me. It's time to rest in peace. Well, no, I, what, what, what my, my gut is, is is that they want you to believe that he's retired, so it's a surprise when he's not. But if it's if he's not, why not do it in front of your biggest audience? You, you know, got why, me. Why do this? Because it was more important to set up that John Cena drifter program. That's that's just for the Royal Rumble. That's just to, to fill the, the spot that, that Samoa Joe had. Dave, my point is they didn't need to do that. They could have done John Cena Undertaker here. Yeah, we didn't need a build for the Royal Rumble for John Cena and the Drifter. I know for a spot in the Rumble. Because they had a plan. They had some sort of a planned spot for John Cena and Samoa Joe. And Samoa Joe's not in. So they switched it. And they did this last week. They already switched to Drifter. But I guess they felt that they needed to follow up. And this is the only week to follow up. So I do get that. I do get that they did the thing with, you know... With him, I don't. But, but but that doesn't mean that you can't do like a, a small tease, like you know, just a mention. <laughs> there, there's a hierarchy of importance, and John Cena versus the Undertaker at WrestleMania is so much higher than John Cena doing a spot with the Drifter in the Royal Rumble that I cannot even talk about them in the same sentence. You're 100 percent right. You are so right. That was my feeling when I saw that. I go like, you know, and you could you can do both. You know what I mean? It's like, because you're doing one, now, the, granted, they're in two different buildings, but you know what? I mean, it's like... Dude, guys went from building to building. It's not... Look, I've I've gone from I've gone from Brooklyn to, to New York to Madison Square Garden more than one occasion. It happened here. Miz, Miz showed up in the Manhattan Center at the end of it's, the show. It's, it's only... It's, I mean, I don't... It depends on traffic and everything, but when I've driven that, that thing and... You know, because uh, I was there in ninety. When I was there in ninety four, I mean, I did that. I essentially did that drive. It's like no time. I mean, fifteen minutes. You know, I mean, in traffic, it's it's horrendous. But it's you know, it's ten at night. I don't think the traffic's going to be bad. You know, and and yeah, he could he could have and and it actually would have been cool because you only you, once you see him the first time, you don't expect to see him twice. But whatever, they decided that it was more important to because the rumbles first. They got to set up the spot in the rumble. 
So that's what they did. Introduce John Laurinaitis, William Regal, Eric Bischoff, Daniel Bryan, and then The Miz comes out, stare down with Bryan, and that leads us to Roman Reigns versus The Miz. Miz Taraj interferes regularly. They get thrown out. They still interfere. It's not a DQ. Roman is distracted. Miz hits the skull-crushing finale, but Roman kicks out. Tries again. Roman fights free. He goes for a spear. Miz sidesteps him, and Roman goes headfirst into an exposed buckle. And Miz hits the skull-crushing finale for the pin. They show a replay, and there had been a spot earlier where Roman went for the drive-by on both of the Miz Taraj. And as he's hitting the drive-by, Miz in the corner removing the corner pad. So Miz is the Intercontinental Champion again, and we can all rejoice. Why? I don't know. So anyway... Let's make it irrelevant again. Okay, so... so What's, what surprised me was obviously not that he won because I expected him to win, but it was pretty clean. I mean, I thought there'd be like major interference. You know, Dude, by, there was all. I mean, not directly uh, leading to the finish, but like throughout the match. Yeah, but the finish was as clean as you're going to get for a heel win. You know, I mean, they run into the into the exposed buckle and all. But I mean, the idea is is that they felt that they needed Miz is Miz is getting a big push right now. Um, so there you go. I mean, Roman. Roman still. I mean, people look at this. And go, oh my God, is he out of the main event at WrestleMania? And as of, as of today, it's still Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. I mean, obviously it could change, um, but the feeling internally is that 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 Roman story from last week is a non-story. So it's not like he's. It is not. He's being punished. Um, it's not even anything like that. It's it's not that they've changed the main event at WrestleMania. So I love. I love. But 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 they. The Miz is in a major WrestleMania match, and the Miz, you know, they're, the Miz has got his reality show, and Miz is going to be a top guy, so they wanted him to win, to win as 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 clean as a heel is going to beat Roman Reigns at this stage of the game. I love that Miz did this interview talking about how, when he was young, he watched Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty and wants to bring the Intercontinental title back to that level. And then he beats Roman Reigns, and everyone presumes Roman must be being buried. He's not. He's not doing a very good job here, bringing this back to that level. Well, I'll tell you what. He can't bring it to the level of Shawn Michaels. He, no, are you kidding me? He can't. I mean, it's, it's like, uh, you know, unfortunately, no matter what they do with him, it's he's the Miz, you know? I mean, it's like, it's a, there's, there's like different parts and everything in the sense that, that he is a very good talker, he is a personality and all that. But when you watch him in the ring, it's just, it's not that he sucks, but he's just not, he's not at that level of Shawn Michaels or Randy Savage or Don Morocco or people like that. There's the credibility is not there. And it's just, he's just not convincing enough. I mean, he's, he, he's an actor playing a wrestler. I mean, is 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 kind of the way I look at him. Um, but, you know, so he's real good at it. He's, I mean, he's. He's a great, you know, we go through this a million times. He's a great talker, and his talking never gets me interested in seeing him wrestle. And when he wrestles, it's like he's not a bad wrestler, but he's just a guy wrestling. He's not a superstar when I see him in a match. APA's playing poker. Jeff Hardy's there, MVP. Ted DiBiase, Rhino Slater, and the Usos. First of many segments. Christian's there to host the Peep Show. His guests are Rollins and Jordan. They come out, Seth is trying to talk, but Jordan grabs the mic, he won't shut up. Fans are rabidly booing this guy out of the building. Seth and Christian just sitting there, aghast. So Sheamus and Cesaro come out, vow to regain the titles on Sunday. They got cheered. Yeah, well, they're bearing Jason Jordan. Everyone's cheering everything they do. Yeah. This is so bizarre, by the way. Like, they love the heels because they're burying the partner of the babyface, who's one half of the tag team champions, and anyway, they do a big schmoz. Jordan goes after Sheamus and Rollins clears the ring. And then Rollins goes for a springboard knee, but he accidentally hits Jordan. The fans are so excited that he beat up his partner. Yeah, and they want to see they want to see them split, which I guess I guess No, here's here's so here's something. Um for two straight weeks, Sheamus and Sarah lost to Titus and um Apollo Cruz. And there's like no follow up, no mention, no nothing. 
Well, I, I mean, maybe maybe uh, they're going to win the tag titles and then they'll defend against. Oh, I, I presume that's what's happening. That they're going to win the tag team titles, and I presume that that you know, watching this, that Sheamus, I mean, um, that Rollins and and Jordan have a screw up, you know, which is the next step. Um, leading to that, so does that mean that we're going to end up with like Rollins against Jordan at WrestleMania? Man, oh man. Yeah. Can't wait for that one. You know what? Hey, you know what? It's probably be a really good match. I hope they can excite me into being interested in it. Um, people people eat, want to dislike Jordan, so you could do that. I mean, obviously it wasn't the original plan for Mania, but I could see that. Probably isn't. So probably isn't what they're going to do. But we'll see. Charlie interviews Alexa Bliss. Charlie's question is, in fact, a stupid question. She says, Alexa, do you think you'll be champion after Sunday? Alexa says, that's a stupid question. That is a really stupid question. And Charlie... I mean, it's like, it's like, it's like, is that like the stupidest question possible? Because she's got no title defenses? I mean, it is she, a... She think, maybe she thinks that she's going to get arrested, too. I don't know. Charlotte shows up. Total giant. Says the only reason Alexa's oh, champion is God. because she it, is on SmackDown. Jesus Christ, they have, you know... She's already five ten and a half, and 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 Alexa's about four eleven or five feet, right? Then they put her in heels. This was the mo the visual of this. It's like if this was the segment, I mean, she should have never been in heels because it was just it was so just visually ridiculous. It made Alexa look like such a nothing. So, so Charlotte says to pr- paraphrase my father to be the woman, you've got to beat the woman. You can ask him yourself. And Flair shows up, Ric Flair. And all things considered, coming off 20% chance of survival, guy looks pretty damn good. Can still cut a hell of a promo. Um, I, I thought Rick looked pretty good, too. Yeah, all things considered. All things considered. Very well dressed, too. He always is. We had an Edge highlight package. More with the APA. Natalia is now there. She won. Heath Slater claimed he had won, but he hadn't. Dana and Titus Brent are there. Dana says, I've crunched the numbers. Heath Slater, you have lost a lot of money. <laughs> Matt Hardy versus Bray Wyatt. I was this, I was so... So, so this, this is Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt's the first match at the Manhattan Center. Although they actually did a match in the building with uh, Mustafa Ali and... Um, oh, God. Hold on. Lindsay Dorado. Right, right. Like two minute match. So, so the people there. So at this point, they they they, they did it a two minute match, and the reason it was a two minute match was because it was during the commercial breaks. So they did give the people something. I mean, they gave the people. I think they got four matches at the Manhattan Center, and I think they got. Oh, hold on, let me. They had there was nothing at Brooklyn. Believe it or not, there was no. They didn't tape anything for main event unless it's um. You know, like beforehand or anything, which was really weird. I figured you you may tape stuff at both places. So the um, hold on, where's my notes? Um, there was uh one, two, three mat. Oh, holy shit! There's three matches only at Barclays. Yep, people were complaining oh. vociferously. Oh about my it. god! And, and no dark match. Right, yeah. No, well, they, well, they did. They did a. They did an angle. They did nothing in Brooklyn, right? And they did the angle at the Manhattan Center with the Miz and uh, was it Seth Rollins? Yeah, it was Seth Rollins and the Miz after afterwards. So you had. Um, so they had uh, Mustafa beat um, Lindsay Dorado, and then they had Tozawa and Atami against Drew Gulick and Tony Nese, which both took place during commercial breaks um, while they were at the Barclays Center. Uh, they just trotted him out there. And then Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy, which if this was a, you know, if, if this was anything but like a, if I hadn't seen how they usually do Bray, Bray Wyatt angles, I would be aghast at what they did here because it was like so nothing. And Bray Wyatt just beat him clean. I but, was aghast. All the time and effort that they put into this that I had to watch. And this was what I got a three minute match. It was where five and a half. Bray but, just but, beat him. Yeah, but they had a commercial, so I saw like two and a half minutes of action. Yeah, yeah. yeah you and then Bray got, you hits prob- Sister you, Abigail for the pin. You probably got you probably got two minutes tops of action. I'm guessing this was an this, absolute it, waste of time. 
Well, I mean, I guess if you think about it, I think the idea is, is that they, in Bray, Bray White's segment, because he did the same thing with Balor, and you think he did the same thing with a couple of guys, it's, it's he wins the first one, and then they come back and beat him at the end. So I guess that maybe that's the pattern. I don't know. Um, All I know is at the actual Manhattan Center, they did a thing for the audience where Jeff Hardy made his triumphant return and sang his song. I know. Why is that not on TV? And Yeah, exactly. That was what? not on TV, but Jeff Hardy makes his return to Raw playing poker. Game. poker. Like, like, Are like, you kidding me? Like he and, and he was so important in that poker segment. Like They couldn't have done without him. Dude, I would say 80% of the people listening to this didn't even notice him there. But yes, he was there. Can you imagine? They introduced all the girls, the Bellas, a very pregnant Maurice, Kelly Kelly, who actually is younger than probably a fair portion of the women on the roster right now. Lillian, Jackie, Tori Wilson, Michelle McCool, Terry Runnels, a pregnant Maria Kanellis, and Trish Stratus, who gets a gigantic pop. Jackie got a big pop. That surprised me. I mean, Trish, I would have expected the pop. Um, but yeah, there they and that were. That was it. They were there. They were there. They were they there. They were yeah. there. That was no their St- appearance. No Stacey Keebler, which I didn't even think about until I saw them. And I go like, you know, no Stacey Keebler. Michelle McCool was there. No Layla. Um no Tori Sable. Wilson's, Tori Wil- yeah, no Sable. Um, you know, which obviously, you know, her husband was there. Um, whatever. I mean, you know, it was designed. It was designed for Trish Stratus to be the star of the thing, and and she she came off with as as the biggest star of all of them, and uh, that was all they did. It was kind of like, you know, they could have done a skit, but it was just. Bring them all out. Drifter runs into Jericho wearing an Alpha Club t-shirt. He sees Elias wearing a scarf, says he's going to play a song for him once he borrows guitar. Elias says no. Jericho says, no problem, I've got my own. He sings a song about how Elias has just made the list. Fans chant his name. All that talk we did over the last week about would he be there, would he not, is he going to make a deal, what's he going to do? He did this. It was like a minute long. Yeah, um... I mean, I can I can see why in the sense that he got to wear his T-shirt. He got to play. So it's kind of like a little thing to promote his tour in a minor way. So it made sense for him to do it. Um, um, it got a big pop. He got, he, you know, I would, I, it's hard to say because he was backstage, but you could hear got a crowd very going. big reaction. Yeah. It, I, I felt that except for Austin, he, you know, and I, I'm sure, to, and Taker, you know, who were going to get the biggest reactions. Yeah, but I Taker think, was in a building with a thousand people, maybe. I not mean, even he, close. He, not he, even close to a thousand people. Whatever it was, it was a shocking, it was a, it was a, like, it was a nothing reaction. Just because there was nobody uh, there. No, but everybody was chanting. It It was like a super, he, he, the people reacted to Undertaker and Austin like they were big superstars. Nobody else except for Jericho, I think, got anywhere close to that kind of reaction. So, in a, you know, in a sense, it's like he, he he was just one of 50 people that was there, but the reaction of the crowd made it that he was, like, actually a star. I mean, like, I don't know. I, I felt, I mean, DX got a really big reaction, too, but it sounded like there was the Jericho reaction. And, of course, that was also with the Manhattan Center. But it did sound like the Manhattan Center. Um, but, I mean, it did sound like the Jericho reaction, for whatever reason, seemed a little bit stronger than the DX reaction. Or actually, a lot stronger. Lights came out. Says it took him 25 years, but WWE finally found him. And by WWE, he means walk with Elias. And the fans all chant it. He's gotten it over. Says he's going to sing a song. I thought, God damn, the Honky Tonk Man's coming out. I didn't. Thank God. He did not come out. Fans chanted, stupid idiot. Pointed out Jimmy Fallon in the front row, who got a very mixed reaction, I might add. Elias performed a song bearing the talent. Finally, out comes John Cena. Challenges Drifter. Drifter says, I don't take orders from anybody, and especially I don't take orders from these Brooklyn scumbags. Tries to jump Cena. Cena lays him out. Immense booze. Cena hits the five-knuckle shuffle. He goes for the AA. Elias slips behind, gives him a low blow, and then goes and waffles him with his guitar over the back. And that's the end. He gave him the drift away also. That's right, the neckbreaker, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was setting up a spot, so... Um... This better be the best spot in the Royal Rumble. <laughs> Probably won't be. Back with the APA. Heath Slater wins. Dana Brooke accuses him of cheating. 
The New Day have now shown up as well. APA says, no fights. If you're angry, you got to go to the ring. We have uh, DiBiase, by the way, winning. So he's now the multi-million dollar man. And then Farouk says, damn. Mark Henry runs into Godfather and his lady that he's with, Olivia. And Godfather says, Olivia, this is Mark Henry. He used to be known as Sexual Chocolate. Mark says, listen, things have changed. We've all grown up. Well, I guess except you. And he says, who is this woman? And Godfather says, Olivia. And Mark Henry's all getting up close to her. And then Godfather reveals, Olivia's my wife. Because I guess really the Godfather has also grown up. Yeah. Is that, is that really his wife? I don't know. I, I think I, I remember when he got married. Maybe it is. Who knows? Probably Tit- not. Titus O'Neil and Apollo Crews versus Heath Slater and Rhino. They're having a match. They go to commercial. They come back. Out come the Dudleys. Everybody in the match bails. Slater screaming them to get back in the ring. So they throw him inside. So Devon, who Booker buried for being fat, hits a top rope headbutt. Bubba tells him to get the tables. They give Slater the 3D through the table. Everybody celebrates, and Heath lies in the rubble. It was a nostalgia table spot. Charlie with AJ. AJ says, hey, to interrupt you here on the 25th anniversary, but I have someone here to help me conduct this interview. It's Mean Gene Okerlund, who is, in fact, very old, still asked a better question than anybody else had asked on this show. So... AJ is so concerned about his handicap match at the Royal Rumble that he immediately does a Hulk Hogan impersonation, that it is a comedy interview talking about Cammy and the Yep movement. I, I, I'll tell you what, the Cammy line doesn't work this at all. This is death. Yeah, it doesn't work at all. This feud needs to end immediately so we can move on past this. Well, the feud doesn't need to end. He just needs to not call him Cammy. It's so bad. This guy's going into the Royal Rumble in a handicap match for the world title. He's facing two buddies. And he's yeah. making jokes and calling them Cammy? Yeah, I know. This I know. sucks. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Sean and Hunter come out for the DX reunion. Sean says, people ask me for my memories of the past 25 years. I don't even remember 25 minutes ago. But he says, remember that gimmick we did with a sausage? And Hunter shuts him down. Ironic. Sean says... How about all those things? And Hunter's constantly shutting him down. Sean is upset he used to be the boss, but now Hunter is the boss of everything. And Sean then says, you know what? I can't talk about it, but you can watch it for just $9.99 of the WWE Network. Everybody boos! Hunter tries to save the segment. You know, you fans are all great, he says. He's trying so hard, but the fans are just dead because they've been there for three hours. They've had... Nothing matches and three hundred dollar you know, a ticket. I, I I actually thought that that they behaved pretty well, all things considered. I in fact, one person who was there live kind of said that like, on before the DX segment, that the people are just sitting there and they're they're chanting refund and they're furious. And as soon as like they're on TV, they just behave perfectly. There really wasn't any like all of the hostility went out of them, but it was really bad up until that point when they came out because yeah, this was like a long show and they'd gotten. You know that bad Undertaker segment and and uh, the the Bray Wyatt match and the two cruiserweight matches. Hunter cuts his promo about DX, mentions China, says DX has been here for everything, including appearing on the very first episode of Raw, which is really weird. <laughs> well, Sean wrestled Max Moon. I guess there's yeah. an X in Max. That's the best I could come up with here. Yeah, well, Sean. Yeah, Sean was in the first episode of Raw, but Hunter didn't come in until a couple. Of, well, no, D- D- DX. DX started in, in 97. 97. In, in, late, in mid to late 97. And Raw, the first episode of Raw was January 93. 93. Yeah. And Triple H was in WCW while Raw, you know, whatever. It, and, and, and um, well, you know, Sean Waltman was there the first year. And I don't know. Yeah, DX in the first episode of Raw, that just wasn't right. But Road Dog hey, and- it's, re- it's, re- it's wrestling. It's not like everything's ac- going to be accurate. Road Dog and Billy come out. Road Dog does his spiel. Out comes X Pac. Crowd chants one, two, three. He says this can't be a DX reunion without this guy right here. Out comes Scott Hall, build his razor Ramon. Well, they they pretty much he actually didn't say it like that because because Scott Hall was never in DX. So it was it was just like it couldn't be a raw reunion. He says you said. can't have a twenty fifth anniversary of Raw without this guy. Right, right, right. Out right, right, comes right. Hall. Yeah, yeah. Go to commercial. Well, they, they, as Razor Ramon, not Scott Hall. Yes. So he cuts a promo. 
can't have a party on Raw without the bad guy. He says he's been watching this whole show, and Raw 25 is just too sweet. So, of course, out comes the Balor Club. DX raises the fingers. Both sides too sweet each other. Billy's about to do his catchphrase when the Revival comes out. We have Revival versus Gallows and Anderson. Gallows runs wild. They hit the magic killer, and they get the pin. Fitting that 25 years after Undertaker versus Damian Demento, we have a total nothing main event of the Raw 25th anniversary show. Dawson grabs Hall. Hall throws a toothpick at him. We have X-Pac hitting the X-Factor. Dog hitting his punches. Billy hitting the Fame Asser. Dawson rolls outside. Dash hits the ring. It's a super kick and a pedigree. And then Balor goes up top, hits the double foot stomp. And Billy tells the fans to suck it. And they're so happy to suck it here on this three-hour Raw. Yeah, they were really happy to get to do that. Um, yeah. I mean, they set it up last week, you know, as far as the revival. We're going to get, you know, nailed by the old by the 90s stars. So that's what happened. Um, I'm sure somebody will say it was great for them because they got the rub. I don't think it was great for them. The rub. They got the rub. They got to work with Shawn Michaels. They got to be pedigreed by Triple H. Yep. What yep. could be better than that to get the rub? Yep. Besides winning a bunch of matches. Oh. Yeah, I guess. They, uh, yeah, it wasn't good for the revival, but it's not the end of the world. <laughs> but this, it wasn't good. This is, uh, this has happened to many people over the years. Not the first and not the last. Yeah. Then we add back of the building, Angle comes out. This was hilarious. He's got a ton of bodies to keep an eye on things. So Strowman comes out, Kane comes out, a bunch of dudes get in the ring to form a wall between them, because God knows we can't have anything happen. Paul Heyman all, comes out. Then they, all, then they all leave. Paul Heyman comes out, introduces his man, Brock Lesnar. This man is not here for nostalgia. He's here for a fight. Okay, so here's the thing. The last time we saw Brock Lesnar and Kane, okay, they had gotten the, that thing dropped on him. And it's like, nobody said anything. Well, it's, it's like, been dropped. Because I mean, he Paul, realized how stupid it was. Well, it was stupid. But Paul Heyman, like, didn't even bring up that, like, Brock is here for revenge. I mean, shouldn't Brock be there for revenge and want to kill Braun Strowman for what happened? Well, he's there to fight. I guess. So he hits the ring. Everybody who's there as a human wall runs for their lives. And so Brock kills Braun with a lariat, lays out Kane with an F5. Braun hits the ring, clotheslines Brock outside, and then gives him a power slam through the announcer's table. They play Braun's music. That's it. They did nothing to convince anyone that Kane is anything other than a designated jobber in the main event of the Royal Rumble. Yeah. I was underwhelmed. Everybody was. I won't Every lie. Everybody was. I think that, uh, you know, I, th I, I think that looking back on this, I think it's pretty much consensus that this was a golden opportunity to do a lot of cool things. And they after the first segment, they did nothing cool. It was just, you know, I mean, let's get a whole bunch. Of, I, I, some people, I guess, I think that the people who watch the show just to see, like, a lot of, a lot of people, you know, from the past, are, we're probably happy that they got to see a lot of people from the past. But, um, you know, and some of them aged well and some of them didn't. And but aside from the, the cameos, I mean, the wrestling was was largely non-existent. I mean, aside from the Miz match, there was nothing really even relevant in the wrestling. There was no good promos on a show that desperately needed some good promos. Other than that first segment, you know, Shane, Shane and Stephanie were all right. You know, yeah, like the AJ promo wasn't good. The Undertaker promo wasn't good. The backstage skits were, for the most part, not good. <sighs> yeah, bad show. I, 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 I got to say, bad. And, and you know, it's it's and not even a bad show in the sense, but a a um, a wasted opportunity. And it's not even like sometimes like there's a bad show, but business wise, it's like okay, it makes sense because you're you're not giving things away on the show, but you're building things up. That you can't even say that for this show. It was just a, a missed opportunity. And, All right. and, I was, and I was worried about Vince. I mean, Vince came out, and it's like, I was really sad seeing Vince. I, 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 I mean, it hit me right away. Just like, uh, just, uh, 
I don't know. He he aged a lot since the last time I saw him. Well, hey, he's got a football league to announce this week. There's no indication of that at all. There's been no hints or nothing on that. So we'll see. 